Hi, beautiful. So, Dyson just released a $500 flat iron. Now, this flat iron is cordless. I've come across only a few cordless flat irons in my lifetime, and none of them are good. Actually, they all are terrible. And they're all very small, and they don't work for a long period of time, and they don't heat up well, and it's just a disaster, all right? You know, my whole life, I was just like, why can't we figure out how to make a battery power a flat iron and a curling iron and a blow dryer so I don't have to wrap those cords everywhere because they just get everywhere. I want everything cordless, okay? If we can make smartphones cordless, Cordless, then we can do the rest. So Dyson did just that with this. Ooh, oh my God, look at it. By the way, today's video is not sponsored. I'll be giving you my very honest opinion of this tool. Now, I've already reviewed the Dyson Supersonic, that is the blow dryer. I've also reviewed the Dyson Airwrap, and now I'm reviewing the Dyson Corral. <laughs> Does it work? I need to know. Should you be dropping a whole lot of money on this high tech flat iron? Is it gonna benefit your hair? Is it gonna make your hair stay healthy? Is it gonna speed up your hair care routine and make it more efficient? Well, we're gonna be testing all the capabilities of this brand new Dyson flat iron and to see if it lives up to all of the hype it's been getting. Let's see what this flat iron can do. Let's do it. <laughs> Oh my God, hi, how are you, sweetie? Thank you for coming on my channel. Why don't we go over the specs of Miss Corral over here? So this flat iron gets up to 410 degrees. You have the options of 330 degrees, 365 degrees, and 410 degrees Fahrenheit because we're in the United States of America. Of America. And of course, this can be pulled off the charging dock and used cordless. Also though, you can plug it in if you really want to, except to me, it sort of defeats the purpose of having a cordless flat iron, but that's up to you. Now this also is a magnet, so it's super easy. And if anybody steps on your cord, it'll just pull out and won't pull it out of your hand. I do appreciate the magnetized charging a lot because there has been so many times where I'm in salon and people will step on my cord and my flat iron will go flying across the salon and hit somebody in the leg or the face or somewhere on their body. And it's not fun. Why don't we place her back in her charging station? Now this next thing is a little bit controversial, right? It's chargeable, right? A flat iron needs very heavy duty batteries in order to charge and be used only through battery power. So obviously you're not gonna get five hour use out of this thing, you know? It's not a cell phone. This thing is producing a lot of heat. Now it does work for 30 minutes on one charge. So a lot of people I know have been saying, I can't do my hair in 30 minutes with a flat iron. It takes me an hour hour, an hour and a half. And I'm like, okay, girl, well, first of all, that's way too long. Why are you taking that long to do your hair? I don't care how much hair you have. I don't care how frizzy your hair is. That's a long time to be taking to do your hair. Okay. And I'll explain that further later. Now, 30 minutes to me is actually fine. I don't typically ever straighten anybody's hair for more than 30 minutes, unless they have 4C hair that is down to their butt, which like doesn't happen. 30 minutes is pretty much fine for me. And then you can just place it back on the charging dock. And before your next client, it'll be charged back up again. I don't hate it. I do wish it was a little longer just in case, but whatever. You can always plug it in if you really need to. It's not that big of a deal. Now you can lock it and store it like this. Um, then you can open it like that. Here is a plus and minus button. It's very simple to use. You just press the plus button if you wanna go higher in temperature or press the minus button if you wanna go lower, super easy. I also love that they didn't put the buttons on the side of the unit. Usually when they put it on the side, you accidentally turn it off. I always always accidentally turn flat irons on and off with my fingers while I'm flat ironing if the buttons are on the side or I end up turning the heat up and down. It's really stupid and annoying. I hate that. I don't know why people design the buttons on the side of the damn flat iron. It doesn't make sense. Now it's a really sleek design. I also noticed that it doesn't exactly open up as wide as I'm used to with flat irons. Usually they're a little bit wider than this. They come up to like here, which honestly hasn't been annoying to me at all. I've been using this for a few days now just so I could see what my initial thoughts were before making this video. I also want to go over 
sure that it is a bit heavier than what I'm used to. And by a bit, I mean it's like double the weight of a regular flat iron. When you're going like this on top of your head, yeah, it definitely feels a bit different. Have I gotten used to the weight? Yes. I don't feel like it really has affected me negatively. I actually don't mind picking up heavier things because I feel like I'm getting a workout in while I'm doing hair at the same time. So like, it's fine with me. Now, one of the coolest things about this flat iron is that these plates here, they actually move. You can see all those little grooves in the plate. They actually bend around the hair so the heat is dispersed evenly throughout each hair strand and the hair doesn't kind of widen as you go down the hair shaft which happens a lot and you'll see later on in this video that it does make a cool little difference in that and they are using copper alloy plates i heard they're good <laughs> but that is why they are that copper color because they are copper plates now usually flat irons use titanium is copper better i'm not sure but we'll be giving it a test today and maybe Maybe we'll figure that out. So now that we've run through all the specs of this piece of technology, let's try it out on some frizzy hair. And I have a couple of uh, Miss Mannequins for that. Okay, so our first test is gonna be with our new Miss Mannequin over here, and she has some hair going on right now. Um, This poor girl. <laughs> it's looking dry and a little frizzy, but that's okay, because we have Corral over here to hopefully save this bad hair day. I obviously haven't blow dried it or anything. I have done no prep to this hair because I wanna see the power of this flat iron without actually blow drying it first. Typically, I would blow dry first. And I know that a lot of you guys at home do not blow dry your hair before straightening. I feel you, I know it's a lot of work. So we'll be going from very curly to very straight today. Now I'm gonna prep her hair with, of course, Viper by X Mondo because we love hydration and curly hair. Hair. This is going to be so great to smooth our hair and not weigh it down, but add the necessary hydration and a lot of shine to our hair. We really want to get a lot of hydration in there before we get started. That'll really help protect the hair and help it straighten out. Now, I want to add double the hydration, just hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. So I'm going to add also electric rain, my moisture cream. We're going to get it all over and oh, her hair already feels better. It smells so damn good, if I do say so myself. I mean, look at that. That's just with my products. I haven't even started straightening it yet and it already looks 10 times better. Now, before I section out the hair, I just want to show you how I'm setting this. So it's fully charged right now, as you can see here. I'm going to press the plus button and I'm going to heat up this flat iron to 410 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to start there and I'm also going to try later bringing the heat down and seeing how it works. Maybe we don't need that much heat for her. Typically I would actually use like a 450 degree flat iron for hair similar to this because I really want high heat to really get that coily hair very, very straight. And as I'm talking, it's already heated up. That was like one minute. I love fast heating times. I hate waiting for my flat iron to heat up. It's so annoying. This thing just really heated up very fast. So we're going to take our comb and we are just going to comb it out really quick. We're just going to do a nice section. All right, and let's do our first pass with our flat iron and see what's happening here. And now don't be alarmed with how much smoke is coming off her hair. That is totally normal. I put a lot of product in and the product is just protecting her hair. I also put a heat protectant in there before I started. And holy crap, um, hi. <laughs> this is pin straight with one pass. Okay, so they weren't lying when they said this was gonna heat up to 410 degrees, even on a battery charge. Like there is no cords. Like I can do whatever I want with this right now. So we're just gonna give it another little pass and I am just impressed. It's just so cool to me that the hair does not kind of get wider as you go down the hair strand. You know when you feed the hair into a flat iron and all of a sudden all the hair is kind of spewing out each side and like getting caught? That doesn't happen with this. Because these plates are bendy and not super stiff, it actually can hold a lot of hair in there and it won't spew out of the sides. That's a really, really cool feature and I'm like kind of very impressed so far. Let's quick do some more sections of this hair and let me get a real idea of what's happening here. Okay, it is gliding through the hair. I don't feel like it's gliding any more than usual though. Now I'm just gonna keep doing one pass because I actually feel like that's all she really needs is just a nice slow pass 
through the flat iron. That's the secret, guys. Go slow. Don't go like this when you flat iron your hair. It's not, you don't need to do that. You're gonna get a better result if you go slower with a flat iron. And the fact that I didn't even blow dry this hair before I started and I let it air dry and now it's becoming this straight, I'm actually like so shocked. So I'm doing one pass on every section now. Ah! Dude, this is actually kind of incredible. As you can see, the hair has been straightened. Now, as you can see, we've used a little bit of battery so far. Um, I'm gonna bring this down to 330 degrees because I don't think we need it this hot. Her hair is straightening very easily and it's looking incredible. Okay, so we are now down to 330 degrees. It just notified me. So we're gonna take this and hopefully it still works and it's looking really good. Of course, it didn't do as good of a job. The hair doesn't feel like it's burning at all. I definitely think I need to bring it up just a little bit, maybe to 365, I think would be good for her hair. Now, typically I would have to bring the flat iron up really high in order to get hair like this pin straight. And I feel like I don't need that, which is really cool. Um, and of course, we always want to use the least amount of heat possible when flat ironing our hair. That way our hair stays healthy and we're not just frying it to a crisp for no reason. I know a lot of you guys do that. <laughs> you can also feel the plates kind of moving as you push down on the hair. I know there's a lot of smoke, don't be alarmed. I feel like 410 was the best situation for her hair. It really is cool how the hair is not sliding side to side. I think that's the coolest part so far. And let's just finish this section off. So I kind of want to take this entire section and run through it. Just see how much hair this flat iron can handle at one time. I'm going to take a very big section and flat iron it. So that definitely wasn't as good. It was definitely like snagging on the hair. And I don't know where it's really snagging. I'm used to it sliding more through very nicely. It kind of does pull, which is unfortunate because I honestly haven't found anything wrong with this until that kind of happened. It definitely flat irons very nicely. I mean, it is still shiny beautiful the hair doesn't feel like it's been overheated and it's been really nicely smoothed out as you guys can see the difference between these two sides is incredible i didn't even blow dry this first and it is so soft but i do have to say that the only downside is is that it snags a tiny bit on the hair thank you for helping us today with that demo we're gonna move on to our next girl who has a bit of different hair and then after that we'll try and do some curls and some waves with this iron and see how they work out. Now I'm at about halfway on my battery right now. So I'm gonna try and move a little bit faster. That way my flat iron does not die while I'm doing this, but hopefully not. Oh, hi baby. This is Miss Manny Quinn from my perm video. Um, as you can see, I brushed out her perm and washed it a few times. So she is looking a little frazzled. I know some of you guys out there have hair like this that isn't too curly. Um, it's kind of in the middle. And I just wanna see again how this works on hair like this. So let's prep again with some oil and prismatic glow. You can also just prep with one or the other. It doesn't need to be both. I am just being extra because that's what I like to do. Okay, let's grab our section and go for it. Now there's a lot of product in here. Don't be alarmed with the smoke. That does glide through the hair nicely. Let's bring this down a bit. It's at 410. Let's bring it down to 365. And let's just give a bit of a bend to the hair instead of stick straight. Okay, okay, okay. I don't know, for some reason, I feel like it's not working as well on this fine hair. It's a little bit difficult to get to the root. It's really not very hot, even after you touch it right when it comes out of the flat iron. And for those of you who flat iron your hair a lot, you know that it's usually like scolding hot. Like if you touch your hair after it comes out of the flat iron, it is burning your hands. This is not happening. I don't know what the reasoning is, is why it's not burning me, but it's not. It's a little bit hard to get all the way to the root with this because it is a bit clunky. The 
plates don't really come out to the side of the iron. They are like a centimeter in, so you can't exactly get up to the root like I would like to, um, especially with people who have very, very curly hair and you need to get that root very straight. It's not gonna be that easy with this iron. We tried it on this hair. It gives a pretty nice bend to the hair. Again, I think the best part about this iron is that it's cordless. I mean, we've seen what its capabilities are when you wanna straighten the hair. I've also been noticing there has been creasing going on and now I'm trying to go as smooth as possible while flat ironing. This is how I flat iron. I don't ever get creasing with other irons. I don't know what that is. I don't know why that's happening. I just keep seeing creasing happening. You can probably see it on camera here. There's one right there, there's one right there, and there's one right there. I don't know what that is. I notice if I do not go like kind of fast and very, very precisely down the hair, you get creasing. Now, I am sort of willing to sacrifice a little tiny bit of creasing for a cordless iron. The thing is, the cordless part of this is really what's getting me. Is it incredible with what it's doing right now? I don't think so. Now we've tried flat ironing. Let's try and do some curls with this. I'm going to take about an inch wide section and we are going to take this thing and just twist it around and we're going to get some curls hopefully. Ooh. Okay, okay. That's a nice curl. Did it glide as much as I'm used to? No, again, it didn't. I'm sorry, Dyson, it just didn't. Maybe I'm going crazy, I don't know, but to me, it does pull the hair. I keep feeling it pulling the hair. Now, nothing's gonna be perfect the first time around. This is Dyson's first flat iron. It's only gonna get better. Let's do a bit of a wave now. Get up to the root as much as possible, even though it's kind of difficult. And I'm going to wave her hair. Ooh. We are getting again creasing from the iron everywhere. You guys, if you've seen me do waves before, I don't ever get creasing. This does have a bit of weird tension. Like you really have to pull down on the hair in order to get a wave going. The more I use this, I have to say, I am getting a little bit less impressed than when I started. You guys are seeing me really analyze this for the first time. I have used it for a few days prior, but I wasn't really like looking too deep into it. I was kind of just using it just to get a feel for it. But now that I'm really experimenting with this, I'm like not crazy impressed. Some of it's good, some of it's not that good. I don't know if it needs to be perfect. And the reason for that is because it's cordless, right? So, I mean, we did a few different waves on this side. Does it look pretty? Yeah. Is it great? No. Does it definitely do the job? Hell yeah. I mean, come on, I, this isn't a bad flat iron by any means. We're gonna bring this back up to 410 and just put a few more curls in here. Now, I don't have any holding products in here either, so that's definitely contributing to the curls falling out. Out. See, look, it keeps getting stuck though. I don't know if that's the product or what, but usually that doesn't happen to me. Now let me curl this entire section and get back to you in a second. Now here is my battery power at this point. I feel like I've actually been using it for quite a long time. It's actually, I think, I feel like it's been over 30 minutes. It's still charged uh, about halfway and I've done quite a bit of work and I have not recharged it once. I have not taken a break. This is just me doing the hair on one charge. The charging, I feel like is fine. I have no complaints with the charging capabilities and it only being available for use for 30 minutes before it dies. It's fine, I can do hair in 30 minutes, believe me. Now, if you guys struggle with flat ironing your hair within 30 minutes, please, Try and prep your hair better. Blow drying it straight or just straighter than what it naturally is, is really gonna help your flat iron glide through your hair. And it's gonna make that flat ironing process a lot easier and a lot faster. Prepping your hair is very important for the flat ironing process because if you blow dry your hair first, you're adding that essential amount of heat into your hair. And then after when you apply the flat iron, it's just gonna really seal that cuticle and make it very flat and very smooth. I always find that if I blow dry before I flat iron, the flat iron results last twice as long. Please try it at home. Do one side with just flat ironing and air drying and one side with a pre blow dry and then a flat iron. It'll last you so much longer, I promise. Also, use the proper products. 
please. And so this has cooled down. The hair feels very nice. It doesn't feel fried. I have no real complaints over this besides the 10 complaints I gave you already. Why don't we conclude what we found out today and wrap this up? Miss Manny Quinn, you gotta go. You gotta get out of here, girl. You can go anywhere, but you can't stay here. So, the Dyson Corral. Is it worth the $500 price tag? Now, let me just remind you that most flat irons are about 150 to 250 maximum, really. I don't usually see anything more than 250, maybe in the 300 range, but 500 is a lot. Now, if you are a hairdresser, you do get $100 off when you use your hairdresser or license to purchase this item. So that is what I did. I did pay for it myself and I paid $400 for this iron. But to the general public, the iron is $500. I personally would have to say, if you're a hairdresser, I think this is a wonderful tool to have. Especially if you are a freelance hairdresser and you do photo shoots or you're on movie sets or anything like that, or you do hair at people's homes, the maneuverability of this iron, the fact that you you don't have to plug it in. The fact that it can go anywhere in any small tight space, you can do it in the car, you can do it on the airplane, you can do it in the bathroom, you can do it in somebody's house that doesn't have outlets. That's pretty hard to beat. Even though I think the iron needs a few adjustments with snagging on the hair, the creasing it adds to the hair, the sheer fact that this is wireless is a huge selling point for me. I don't think it needs to be perfect because it's wireless it really brings it up 10 notches for me. As a hairdresser, yes, I do think this is a great tool to have in your kits. I think it's really awesome and I think it really does the job. Maybe not perfect, 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 but really, really great. And for $400, yeah, I believe it's a great tool that you'll have for a very long time and it's worth the investment. Now for my people out there that are not hairdressers, if you have the money to just spend and it's whatever to you, hell yeah, it's a fun thing to have. It makes me happy. It's fun to have at home. Is it better than your regular flat iron if you have a nice one? No. I have so many flat irons that are quite nice and are like $250 and they work amazingly and even better than this. Um, and they're a lot lighter and faster. But if you're really looking for something that's wireless, yes, of course, go for this. However, do you need this? No, I don't think it's going to change your life. Again, it's a fun tool to have, but it's not life-changing for somebody who is not a hairdresser, who is not trying to do clients in weird locations. Um, it's just not necessary, but it is cute. And it's kind of like fun to have and be like, oh yeah, I actually have the Dyson Corral. So yeah, I'm kind of cool. <laughs> and with that all said, that for you is my comprehensive non-sponsored review of the Dyson Corral. Dyson, keep up the amazing work. I think you're doing amazing things and maybe everything for me wasn't perfect but I think it's a great great tool and I will be keeping mine for sure and I love all of the Dyson things that I've purchased over the years and I think it's a great company to stand behind and I'm excited for the future of what Dyson has to bring the hair industry I'm so glad finally somebody is innovating hair tools it's been way too long with the same damn tools that suck it's time for a wireless future and that is all for today, guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter at Bramondo NYC and check out my hair care brand Xmondo Hair for beautiful, fabulous, amazing hair products that will make your hair feel beautiful, fabulous, and amazing. And that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to live your extra life and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. This is Viper Smoothing Oil. This oil is a combination of all of my favorites. It has bobap oil, argan oil, carrot seed oil. Now, what sets this oil apart is it really penetrates the hair cuticle. It goes deep inside. Instead of just laying on top of the hair and adding a greasy film, it's gonna actually go inside. Help supply nutrition, hydrate, and add a lot of shine.